Bartolome de Medina was a Spanish businessman who liked to challenge. In the mid-1500s, he considered how to reverse declining yields and rising production costs for silver ores mined in Spanish America. De Medina learned that mercury and saltwater brine could be used to extract silver from ground ore. He traveled to Pachuca in New Spain, now Mexico, to test the technique. In his model refinery, the silver ores were crushed to a fine slime and then combined with salt, water, copper sulfate, and mercury. The mixture was spread in an outdoor enclosure or patio. Horses driven around the patio further mixed the ingredients, which eventually formed a silver amalgam. The patio process was a success. Silver output boomed as amalgamation replaced smelting as the primary method of silver production in Mexico and Peru. Derivatives of the process were used throughout the 19th century until the cyanidation process was introduced. The Americas produced three-fifths of the world's silver until about 1900. Thanks to the innovation provided by Bartolome de Medina's patio process, Spanish-American silver production helped fuel the development of extensive trade networks, which were key to developing world commerce linking Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Ben Williams was born into a prominent family of Welsh metallurgists. Ben and his family emigrated to the United States, eventually landing in San Francisco in 1874. There, Ben's brother-in-law, DeWitt Bisbee, joined Ben's father in founding Bisbee Williams & Company. The company sent Ben to the Arizona Territory, where he served as superintendent of the San Javier Mine near Tucson. In 1880, Ben was put in charge of general operations for the new Copper Queen mine near Mule Gulch. He was joined by his brother Lewis, who oversaw the smelter. Thanks to the brothers' technical and management skills, the mine accounted for 70% of Arizona's copper output that year, producing a total of 700 tons. In 1884, Phelps Dodge and Company bought a controlling interest in the Copper Queen mine, merged it with the adjacent Atlanta claim, and formed the Copper Queen Consolidated Mining Company. Ben Williams, already well regarded by the community, became general manager. In 1897, Williams brought electric lighting to the caverns below the Copper Queen mine to illuminate a gathering at the Masonic Grand Lodge of Arizona and to entice future visitors to enjoy the caverns. Williams retired in 1899. Thanks to his exemplary leadership, Mule Gulch, now renamed Bisbee, became a vibrant mining town known as the Queen of the Copper Camps. Charles Mills graduated from the University of Iowa School of Engineering in 1888. He worked at the Copper Queen Mine in Bisbee and other Copper Queen Consolidated Mining Company properties in Arizona. He then became general manager of the Detroit Copper Mining Company at Marinci, Arizona. The Spanish-American War broke out in 1898 and Mills signed up as a private in the Rough Riders. After the war's end, he returned to Marinci. In 1912, he put on two hats. As general manager of the Inspiration Consolidated Copper Company in Miami, Arizona, he affirmed block caving as the mining method and put the methods inventor in charge of the mines. Mills also selected flotation as a method of concentration and directed the construction of all mine facilities. At the same time, as general manager of the International Smelting Company in Miami, he oversaw construction of International's smelter. When the United States entered World War I, Mills served as a dollar-a-year man, helping to oversee aircraft production for the U.S. Army Air Service. After the war, Mills formed the Apache Powder Company, now called Apache Nitrogen Products Incorporated. The company provided a much-needed regional source of explosives for southwestern mines. Mills' parallel career in banking began in 1899, he merged smaller local banks to create Valley National Bank, which became the largest bank in Arizona. He served as president of Valley National Bank and the Apache Powder Company until his death in 1929.
old-time mucking was slow, back-breaking work. In 1931, Bert Royal, a hoistman at the North Lily Mine in Eureka, Utah, designed a mechanical device to do the job. He brought his idea for a mucking machine to Mine Superintendent John Finley. Finley made suggestions for improvements and ordered the mine's shop to build the machine Royal had designed. Royal's design was based on the crowding and arc motion used in shoveling broken rock. Built mostly of parts from the mine's scrap pile, the machine debuted in October 1931. It filled an ordinary mine car in one minute and 20 seconds and revolutionized the mucking process. Eastern Iron and Metals Company, known as IMCO, secured the rights to the machine. The company paid royalties to both men. Findlay retired and Royal joined IMCO as a full-time consultant. Royal received 17 patents, eight of them for mining applications. He shared two of the patents with Finley. Lewis Carroll Grattan earned his Bachelor of Science degree from Cornell University in 1900. He studied at Canada's McGill University for two years, then returned to Cornell to work on his PhD. He received the degree in 1930 for his thesis, Hydrothermal Origin of the Rand Gold Deposits. Grattan joined the U.S. Geological Survey in 1903 and helped with the restudy of Colorado's Cripple Creek District. In 1909, he was appointed director of the newly formed Copper Producers Association in New York City. Soon after, Grattan joined the Harvard faculty as a mining geology instructor. He became a full professor in 1912 and remained at Harvard for 37 years. In 1913, Grattan was appointed director of the Secondary Enrichment Investigation, which was sponsored by the Geophysical Laboratory of the Carnegie Institution of Washington, D.C., Harvard Mining School, and several U.S. copper companies. The investigation studied major copper districts throughout the world. During World War I, Grattan served as secretary of the Copper Producers Committee for War Service. He also helped the Internal Revenue Service develop valuation methods for taxing extractive industries, leading to the adoption of the depletion allowance. Grattan consulted with many mining companies, but his 30-year relationship with the Cerro de Pasco Corporation is most noteworthy. The company's mining properties in Peru were plagued with ventilation and haulage problems. Grattan believed a tunnel dug 1,000 feet below the lowest mine level was the answer. The company followed his advice. The Grattan Tunnel is still one of the longest mine tunnels in the world. Grattan devoted his life to studying ore deposits and fostering the careers of his students. He served as president of the Society of Economic Geologists in 1931 and received the Penrose Gold Medal in 1950.